so hard on this, so you need to get a little to get this tummy in your little bit. And it's like, it's We made a picture uh, where we saw it the so we had lots of things to No, no, of course, please, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's Well, for this two-day conference, it is kindly organized by the United Nations Department of Economy and Social Affairs, the International Institute for Applied System Analysis, and the College of Population Studies, Jolangon University, in collaboration with the Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific. 
Yes. All right. Uh, at the beginning of this opening session, we would like to invite Professor Padip Arpor, the president of Chulangkorn University, to give a welcome remark. Thank you, sir. I'm the Deputy Secretary General of the Office of the National Economic and Social Development Council. Uh, Ms. Carol Schmidt, the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs Population Division. Mr. Sergei Shabok, Deputy Program Leader with the World Population Program at ESA. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am very pleased and honored to welcome all of you to the expert group meeting on measuring population aging, bridging research and policy. On behalf of Chulang College University, I would like to express how sincere thanks to UNDISA, ESCAP, IESA for organizing this remarkable event. I am also thankful to Associate Professor Whitman Mitchell Hall and the staff of the College of Population Studies, Geological University, for putting their best efforts in making this conference happen. Geological University, we have missions to co-create knowledge and innovation for sustainable development of Thai and global society through partnerships. With the increasing significance of population aging, the elderly, or related retired populations have become our main research focus in recent years. We launched the Tulang Project University Aging Research Integration, or we call as Tula Ari, in mid 2018. Tula Ari is a platform which integrates knowledge and expertise across disciplines and faculties in order to address challenges of aging society in Thailand. I believe that this today conference, which brings together outstanding experts from all over the world, will contribute to better understanding of aging and its implications for better policy design at national, regional, and global levels. I would like to welcome you all once again and wish you a fruitful thought-provoking dialogues leading to long-term collaborations and results. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Andy Duarte, the President of Duarte University. And thanks for Good morning, everyone. Uh, Dr. Andy Duarte, the President of Duarte University, visiting its guests, and ladies and gentlemen. A very good morning to you, and more welcome extended to all of you. Uh, especially those who have traveled quite a distance to be here uh, to attend the opening of the expert group uh, meeting on measuring population aging, bridging research and policy. The organizing of this meeting through the close collaboration uh, effort of the following agencies, including the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, the Economic and Social Commission, for Asia and Pacific, the International Institute for Applied System Analysis, and lastly, the College of Population uh, Studies and Tula ARI Children's University. This is one great example of such strong commitment to addressing the individual demographic trend of population aging that is prevailing at both the national and global scale. This and seeking appropriate uh, automation design to adequately deal with uh, such challenges. As some of you may know, uh, as, as some of you may have aware that uh, Thailand has recently announced the national strategy uh, 2018 to 2037, which is the country first uh, national long-term strategy developed pursuant to the constitution. The national strategy provides essential policy framework required to ensure that the country achieves the vision of becoming a developed country with security, 
prosperity and sustainability in accordance with the sufficiency economy philosophy, with the ultimate goal being all Thai people's happiness and well-being, and most importantly, no one is left behind. Unquestionably, the issue of population aging has been included into the national strategy as we need to address the problem in a more integrated and systematic manner. With cooperation from all, develop from all development partners, the impact of population aging will inescapably uh, be manifested in both economic and social aspects if no proper measures are in place. As a result, as stated in the national strategy, the utmost effort will be expended to order, in order to ensure life cycle development of which Thai people of all ages can adequately be developed in a multi-dimensional multi manner to become skillful and quality citizens. By equipping them with suitable knowledge and skills required by the fast-changing world in the 21st century, also lifelong learning will be extensively promoted. Therefore, productivity will uninterruptedly be raised. Furthermore, innovation and technology will also be profoundly invested as it can effectively improve productivity and lead to higher income per capita. Data science and technology will also be employed in order to enhance the government sector's efficiency and effectiveness. Big data and AI technology will be used to provide data and information needed to accurately uh, decide evidence-based policies, especially better targeting welfare, social assistance measures, infrastructure with uh, universal design will also be implemented nationwide. Also, social empowerment based on intergeneration solidarity will also be promoted in all local communities. Uh, in order to strengthen independent management of local communities and create viable and healthy economy and social surrounding aim to aim for quality citizens of all ages who can contribute to society and nation more productively. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Royal Thai government, I would like to wish everyone a successful meeting with extensive experiences and knowledge uh, attain for further productive applications. And certain that uh, through cooperation of global experts in aging, both at nation and international level, I hope that this meeting can tremendously broaden our perspective and knowledge on population aging. It's related implications as well as appropriate policies in order to bring about intergeneration solidarity between the older and younger generation of uh, one of crucial supporting factors to sustainable development. Cooperation provided through a network among us will act as an effective tool to work on any problems we may encounter and achieve a happy world where everyone lives happily and sustainably with no one is still left behind. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Mr. Nusha Tishyanan, uh, Deputy Secretary General of the Office of the National Economic and Social Development Council. Next, we would like to invite Dr. Caroline Schmidt, the Chief of the Fertility and Population Aging Section from the Population Division of the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, to give an opening remark. Good morning everyone. I am absolutely excited to be here. It's a fruit of work for many months and we have worked uh, and really put a lot of effort in to get everyone here, but this event would not be possible without you here, without the support of Yasa, Chulan University. We would not have been here. But now let me stick to my Statement, otherwise I talk too much and I don't want to do that. First of all, on behalf of the Director of the Population Division and Department of Economic and Social Affairs, 
I would like to thank the government of Thailand to host us here in Bangkok for this first of a kind and rather unique expert group meeting, measuring population aging, bridging the research policy gap. Demographers early on have recognized population aging as a success story. Frank Holstein, first director of the Population Vision, stated at the symposium on social and economic problems on aging in 1953 already, that you are citing as a whole the problem of aging is not a problem at all. It is only the pessimistic way of looking at the great triumph of civilization. Two World Assemblies on Aging, the first in Vienna 1982 and the second in Madrid 2002, were convened by the United Nations for the international community to recognize population aging as a challenge, but more so as an opportunity for development. Given that population aging in its very early stages was limited to the developed world and measurements and concepts defining aging and older persons were mainly based on male retirement age in developed countries, mainly Europe, and that age was around 60. Because we at the UN, we are often asked who decided the age of 60 because our data statistics is older persons are 60 and and the very old person then is 75. So nobody ever decided that age, but it is, as I just said, it's taken from mainly European uh, retirement ages. With increasing longevity, almost all populations see the percentage and more so the absolute number of older persons, and I'm going back to our contract, age 60 and over, raise and dust, Aging affects now almost all countries globally. So it's not something that's the future, it's happening now, and I think all of us in the room know that, are aware of it. Recognizing, however, that aging and getting old is not the same for men and women, nor the same for the rich and poor, nor for the developed or developing world, or population in Africa, Asia, the Pacific, small island in big countries, we realized that we need to develop more diverse concepts and measurements that take the specific context of populations and societies in, into consideration. So our colleagues from YASA, Sergey Chergov and Warren Sanderson, were the ones who led the development of new measurements to question and challenge what the UN and others have just massively approved. 60 is aging and 60 and over is older persons. And they have looked into the development of such new measurements over the last decade and beyond. And they have approached us, I understand now, almost three years ago, with a suggestion to bring together scientists, academics, government officials and the media to review and discuss the scope and limitations of old and new measurements and to assess how these measurements can contribute to enhanced policy making at the national and regional level. Since then we have worked closely with the colleagues from YASA and the College of Population Studies of the University with support from our colleagues from ESCA to organize this. As I said, when I opened, I'm now extremely happy that we all have made it to Bangkok and some from very far, and some just walked across the street. But we all <laughs> look forward to an interesting and very exciting meeting. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Okay, next, we would like to invite uh, Dr. Uh, Samina Hendi, the Chief of the Sustainable Demographic Transition, from the Social Development Division of the Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific to give an opening remark. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues and friends, welcome to Bangkok. My name is Sabina Henning. I have the Population Development Section at UN ESCA, the Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific. It is a regional development arm of the United Nations in the region based in Bangkok. 
It is made up of 53 member states and nine associated members. The region as a whole is home to 4.1 billion people. That is roughly two-thirds of the world population. ESCAP's work on population development goes back at least to the 1960s, when we hosted a first Asian Pacific population conference in 1963, well ahead of other regional commissions. In the field of population aging, we have provided a platform for regular regional reviews of the Madrid International Plan of Action on Aging since 2002, and we have continuously engaged in research and capacity development on population aging in Asia and the Pacific. It is a great pleasure to collaborate with SPESA, YASA, and Shula University for the CGF. Living longer, healthier lives provides tremendous potential for social and economic development and personal fulfillment. We fully agree with the co-organizers that new ways of thinking should be applied when discussing population aging. New ways that will help us to fully harness its opportunities. As it happens, I just returned last night from the first council on aging held in Ankara, Turkey, organized last week under the auspices of the president of Turkey, Mr. Erdogan. Turkey is an ESCA member state. As some of you might know, the president of Turkey has remarked on population aging in his speech at the United Nations in the last General Assembly uh, in the fall. It is clearly a matter of high importance to Turkey, but many countries in the region, if not the entire world. I'm sure that this meeting will contribute to a new way of understanding population aging, its challenges and opportunities, and that it will also help us to better communicate what it means to be older and to talk about population aging. I look forward to hearing the deliberations and the conclusions at the very end. On behalf of UNESCO, welcome to Bangkok. We wish you every success. And lastly, we would like to invite Dr. Sergei Shabov, the Deputy Program Director from the International Institute for Applied System Analysis to deliver an opening remark. Thank you. Uh, distinguished guests, uh, dear colleagues, dear friends, it's a great pleasure to welcome you uh, at this very unique event. It took about a year and a half uh, when we first discussed with the head of population division John Wilmots uh, at uh, IUCT uh, meeting in Cape Town, the possibility of having this event. And now we are here and yes, it's happening. So why is it Bangkok? It is Bangkok because it's a wonderful city with great history, with charming and very friendly people, with great weather and great food. But the most important, because Chulalongkorn Lampong University and its College for Population Studies are also here in Bangkok. Chulalongkorn University uh, had a very long history of great cooperation with YASA. I personally, I think, spent about one year of all together of teaching here. And whatever and everything was organized by Chulalongkorn University, it was all the time smoothly, it was great, and like Karin said today, it's like driving like BMW for the best German road. <laughs> Everything is really amazing. Uh, so that's why uh, Population Division and YASA approached uh, CPS, Coach for Population Studies, to collaborate with us on the, uh, organizing the meeting. And they were immediately on board and we were extremely happy. So why this meeting is unique? So this meeting is tackling issues related to aging. But there are plenty of different meetings on aging. Usually, uh, they paint a bit gloomy picture of the future. Now, to my knowledge, this is the first meeting which is really focused on how do we measure age and what consequences it has for different, uh, for, 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 for our future, for, for policy making and things related to that. So unlike many other meetings, uh, we have some hope. We hopefully will have some hope uh, as a result of this meeting, and our future will look a bit more optimistic. So traditionally, aging is predominantly characterized by chronological age, and conventional measure of aging do not distinguish 60-year-old person living today, living 100 years ago, or living 100 years ahead. All of them are just 60-year-old people, and that's the only characteristic that usually is taken into account. 
cars. But people are very different because characteristics of people living 100 years ago, living today, are extremely different. People, just different people, different planet. So uh, people are healthier, people are physically strong, people are cognitively performing much better. So that's why six-year-old today, and living long ago, and living ahead, 100 years from now, they are completely different people. And the only, as I said, the only characteristic that they have in common is chronological age. All other characteristics are usually ignored. And traditional measures of aging do not distinguish 60-year-old person living, for example, in Japan or in Burkina Faso, which has one of the lowest life expectancy in the world. So in the past 10, 15 years, new measures based on characteristics of people who developed. And it was extremely important that uh, yeah. in, at the end of 2017, the United Nations, mm -hmm. first time, picked up some of our measures and they published them in the World Population Aging Report. Mm -hmm. Now, at this moment, there are basically two measures of aging. Traditional one published in this report, a new one. Now, which sort of makes the user, uh, with, which leaves the users with a dilemma which of them to use. And we hope that this meeting will a little bit clarify what type of measure should be used. So a couple of years ago, I was presenting uh, some ideas uh, and results from the project Remeasuring, which is Remeasuring, remeasuring Aging, uh, which is basically one of the major contributors to, to, this, uh, to this event. And uh, the YAS Council, uh, the which is the governing board of Yasa, the head of the council, uh, he was, I think, around age 75, he came up to me and said, you know, after your presentation, I feel 10 years younger. <laughs> so I hope that after this meeting, many participants who are traditionally labeled a senior or middle-aged will also feel a bit younger. So I wish all of us a very pleasant and productive meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to thank um, the President of Jolanta University and Deputy Secretary General of the Office of the National Economic and Social Development and also the Chief from the United Nations. Okay, coming next is the first session on different measures of uh, aging. We would like to invite Dr. Kalamai Shemit once again to moderate this session. And we're going to start like five minutes. Thank you, Master. We would appreciate uh, if the participants who were funded and supported by the United Nations, if they could share <coughs> it, hand over the boarding passes and the tickets. We need those in order for participants to get a reminder of their opinions. Then we also do have an evaluation form. Everybody has it in their bag. We would appreciate it at the end of the meeting to be handed over to us outside or in the room. There are sign-in sheets. We would like everybody to sign in with everyone. They're outside. Thank you. 